Thank you so much, Mr. Minister. Um, you have re just released the white paper. So, does the Gambia have the Gambia judiciary have the capacity to prosecute um, all those who have been indicted? Yes, for some of the offences. Yes, because uh, we already have some of them in our penal code. Things like straight out murder, they can be prosecuted. But we don't want the piecemeal approach to this. So that is why I talked about setting up a special chamber that will take a holistic approach of all the offences so that they deal with them in, in, in wholesome. Jame currently lives in exile in Equatorial Guinea. How do you intend to bring him to justice? There are many ways of trying to get Jame. You know, some of the offences Jame is accused of, some of them enjoy universal jurisdiction. So he could be prosecuted for them anywhere in the world. That's, that's one way. So, but then the kind of tribunal we intend to set up also will have an international jurisdiction. We will create a statute for that. So there will be an enabling statute that will vest that court with a universal jurisdiction as well. So he could be either tried in the Gambia or outside of the Gambia. But this is something that is to be determined uh, as a result of further consultations. Most of the people who committed these crimes, the junglers, they live outside of the jurisdiction. Um, are there any plans to also bring those people to justice? You know, nowadays, nobody can hide from justice. Wherever they are, once the preparations are, 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 are ready, once we are ready to go after them, wherever they are in the world, they will be got. Uh, you heard us mention about the prosecution of Michael Correa in the U.S. Usman Sonko is being prosecuted in Switzerland. Whoever taught Germany will be prosecuting by law. So wherever they are in the world, uh, the long arm of justice will reach them. Out of the... 265 recommendations, they were all accepted, except two. What are those two that were rejected by the government? One of the two is the recommendation made against a group of judges that the TRRC considered to be machinery judges. We rejected that from a public policy point of view because we have a bilateral relationship with our sister countries where these uh, judges came from. And also because uh, Jamme used the judiciary, there is no doubt about that. But then it was not only foreign judges that were culprits of these activities. There were some local judges and magistrates maybe that were part of it. So to identify only known Gambians and call them machinery judges risk, um, I mean, uh, compromising our bilateral relationship with some of the countries where these nationals came from. So from the public policy point of view, we do not accept banning them. More so, none of them are in the Gambia at the moment. So what does banning them from public service uh, serve? What purpose does it serve? Uh, so we said for, for expediency in the interest of our bilateral relationship with our sister countries who have always stood by us in giving us technical assistance in areas that we have needed the most, whether it is health, education, judiciary, legal sector, they have always provided us with technical assistance. So we don't want to risk jeopardizing those bilateral relationships. So as a result, we, we do not accept that one. In total, how many people are going to face prosecution here? Uh, we're still counting, to be honest. Uh, on the face of it, it appears to us TRC recommended prosecution of about 69, but later we found out that it could be more than that. But mark you, we may not probably have to prosecute everybody. You know, there is a prosecution strategy that we are working on, and that strategy will inform who will be prosecuted, and who else we may probably enter a plea bargain with and negotiate uh, with them. Of course, some of them, in fact, have been recommended for amnesty. So not all of them will be prosecuted. I do not know the exact number at this stage, because like I said, the prosecution strategy is evolving. Why did you deny um, some of these people who committed the crimes amnesty? But you, you, you don't want to give them blank amnesty, but you want to get into a, a plea deal. Yes, this, this is normal, because some of them know a lot. So they could be useful to the prosecution of others. So the, the, the only bargaining tool that we have is to give them those amnesties or immunities that have been recommended for them. But we would want to get something in exchange for them. Of course, you see, we are, we are, we are, we are the, we're representing the public interest here. So instead of just telling you, go home and sleep, we can say, okay, you can go home on condition that you can tell a, a court, when the court is set up, what you know about a particular transaction. I think that is the least they, they, they could do for us. Why did the cabinet decide to exonerate the, the director of the SIS? The exoneration of the SIS, SIS director is premised on the fact that he is alleged to have destroyed evidence. The destruction of evidence happened after, outside of the mandate of the TRC. So we think that recommendation was out of place. That was all. Can forgiveness substitute justice? Um, not necessarily, because you can forgive me uh, for what I did wrong to you, 
uh, but the state still have a responsibility to prosecute and punish crime. But the two can be can go side by side. So if I understand you well, the machinery judges and the, the, the recommendation for the prosecution of the, the, the SIS director, those, are, those were the two who were rejected. The SIS director was not recommended to be prosecuted. It was recommended to be banned from holding public office in relation to destruction of evidence. That destruction of evidence happened, I think, around May of 2017. The mandate of the TRRC is from July 1994 to January 2017. So that means that activity for which they want him punished is outside of their mandate. So on based on that, if government wants to look at that issue, we will look at it separately. But it cannot form part of the mandate of the TRRC. That was it. Finally, is there a political will to make sure that uh, what happened with the Janet Commission doesn't happen with this one? Mr. Wally, you heard my statement, so I would refer you to my statement. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much.